Super Talk Mississippi media production. Pike County, here comes your morning show. Dave in the morning on 93.5 FM, Super Talk Mississippi. So now, understand, you're not going to dictate to me what I do and what I don't do, but I'm still the mayor, Mr. Brown. None of this meeting is recorded. None by any force. Correct. No, the money is recorded. I'm being accused. Said I want to make it on record. I want the allegations in writing, part of the accused, or on recording of this arrest. your host, Dave Hughes. To the top of the hump again, baby. Wednesday. And we're ready for that downhill slide, aren't we? For the weekend. I think everybody is, right? Hope it is a wonderful Wednesday morning for you. If not, maybe the weather will perk you up a bit. Sunny with a high of 87 today. Enjoy it by Friday. 50% chance of afternoon showers with a high of 84. Little tiny chance of rain Saturday and Sunday. Not much, though. But nowhere, nowhere on the weather forecast is the first number of the temperature a 9. We seem to be firmly in the 80s. By the middle of next week, by the way, Monday and Tuesday night, we have a chance to be down in the upper 50s for a low and around 80 for a high. So we have uh, even coolerish weather on the way. Absolutely no one is going to complain. Uh, no, I can't say that. I cannot possibly truthfully say that no one's going to complain about it. Somebody is griping that it's not still 162 degrees out there. You know it. I know it. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what we have. Somebody's upset about it. And you know I'm telling the truth. You you probably know somebody that's that way. But then there are times where, well, maybe a little bit of complaining is justified. And that's, uh, well, that's the ongoing situation with Macomb High School. In case you didn't hear the notification, the fallout continues from the brawl that they had last week, at the beginning of last week, uh, fighting in the halls, in the classrooms, desktops were thrown at people. Uh, You probably have seen the video by now. It was ridiculous and unacceptable. Well, you know, they moved the Macomb South Pike game, the rivalry game, to 2 o'clock Friday afternoon with no fans. It was a vacant, empty, abandoned-looking set of stands at the game. South Pike came away with the win. By by the way, the, the South Pike Eagles paraded around campus this week with the Green and Gold Bowl trophy. Well, fair's fair. They won. There's not much you can say about that. Good job, Eagles. That's about all you can say. They won it fair and square. Wasn't even close. So, good for them. Well, now, uh, 
another big game on the McComb schedule has a little bit of a change. Uh, and that is the homecoming game. Now, the, the homecoming game is not this Friday. It's next Friday is McCombs homecoming on the 11th. So it's, it's not something that impacts this week. But they have made a change, and this one's kind of a big one. Uh, the McComb School District posted this notice on its Facebook page saying, quote, due to various safety concerns, recent developments, and unfortunate de- events in the school and community, we decided to cancel the 2024 homecoming tailgating event. No tailgating before homecoming. That kind of makes some sense. Uh, just because of everything that's been going on. Tensions are high, I think is the phrase that you're looking for. So, you know, over by C.C. Moore Stadium, the big parking lot right across the street between there and the football field house is always full. People have their tents set up, they're cooking. It is a true tailgating experience if you've never seen it. Uh, And they always have a great time. But, um... Great times can be ruined by stupid people. And that's what we're experiencing here. Dave, are you calling students stupid? The ones fighting in the hall and throwing desks at each other? You bet I am. And I will continue to do so. But I do want to call out, and by the way, the parade is still going to happen next Friday. Four o'clock is when it will roll down Delaware uh, on Friday, October 11th. Not this Friday, next Friday. Then the Tigers will play Richland for homecoming at 7 o'clock. Getting a lot of uh, notices out, uh, still statements that violence will not be tolerated at Macomb High School. Um, So everybody has to suffer because some people want to act unsociably. Let's go with that word. I discarded the first five words that popped in my mind because, well, (sighs) there are rules. But there's one thing that I want to call out about the notice that was put out. Due to various safety factors, recent developments, and unfortunate events in the school and community, we decided to cancel the 2024 homecoming tailgating event. When you have lost control of a part of the student body, when they don't fear you, when they don't care about the consequences, where nothing impacts their decision-making, they're just going to do whatever the heck they want to do, when, where, and how they want to do it, and don't care what you, as the authority figures, think about it, That's not an unfortunate event. That's a failure in leadership. That is a a lack of supervision. Unfortunate event. And see, we talk about this sometimes, the semantics of things. The way things are phrased, the words that are used are very important. Always have been, always will be. How you say something is almost as important as what you say. So to use the phrase unfortunate events is a backdoor way of working the feeling into everyone's brain who reads that of, well, yeah, but it it wasn't our fault. We didn't do anything. It's not our fault. It's an unfortunate event. From where I'm sitting in the cheap seats, it's not an unfortunate event. It's a failure. It's a dismal failure. When is the last time you heard of that level of brawl inside school during a school day while the kids were in there to learn? When's the last time you heard of something like that? So we had the Macomb South Pike game impacted. Nobody could go to that game. Now they've canceled tailgating. The fallout continues 
But so far, all of the visible fallout from this is resting solely on the people that weren't in the holes fighting. There needs to be some type of uh, confirmation, some type of, uh, of, of public admission of the problems without trying to sugarcoat it and an explanation of what's being done about it. What's being done to make sure it never happens again? Walk us through the steps. Walk us through the things that are being done to take care of this. By the way, speaking of semantics, off subject, but I, I got to mention this for just a second. If you didn't see any of the debate last night, uh, J.D. Vance blew a lot of people's minds because they have built up this narrative by picking and choosing their words carefully over the past few months, uh, talking about J.D. Vance and uh, how, how problematic he was and how he was a goof and how he, he, he just had no sense and there was, he was weird. That's the word. Again, semantics. This is how important word choice is. They've been trotting that weird word out every five seconds. The guy who did his best bug-eyed bandit impression last night for half of the debate, Tim Walls, came up with that idea. He came up with using that word and attaching it to the Republican Party. Well, that didn't work last night because one of them looked weird and one of them looked cool, calm, collected, in control, and I dare say came off as having a higher IQ than the other three people there, the two moderators and Walls, uh, combined. That was, and, and to be fair, Governor Walls kept it pretty much civil. That, that was one of the better debates I've seen in a while. There was no screaming. There were no real cheap shots, you know, in the term, in, in the category of what we're used to. None of that. It was just an actual, honest-to-goodness, old-fashioned debate. Man, was that refreshing. And by the way, if you would like to find out uh, who's a Democrat and who's a Republican, ask them who won the debate last night because the only ones saying Tim Walls uh, are the hardcore true blue all the way so far to the left you can't see them from the center liberals. Everybody else knows exactly who won that debate, and it was not close. However, while we're talking about semantics... And word choice and the way you say things, uh, I want you to keep in mind the phrase two weeks. I, I want you to remember that during the break here. When we come back, we'll dip into last night's work session of the Macomb City Board of Mayor and Selectmen. And you'll see why I mentioned that phrase. It's all semantics. And trust me, a lot of times with the Macomb City Board, it's 100% semantics. It's how you phrase it. It's the words you use. It's what kind of uh, bull fertilizer you choose to shovel today and how high you plan to pile it is what's important. Because they talked about the audits last night. We'll get into that next. Keep it here. This is Kristen with Selman's Jewelers. I'm excited to start a new trivia question of the week, so stay tuned for the answers. This week's question is going to be about the October birthstone opal. Opals are formed how many years ago? Opals form in several different colors. We'd love for you to stop by and see our collection today. Come by Selman's, your family-owned jewelry store since 1945. 1311 Delaware Avenue, Macomb. Don't miss Dave in the morning, even when you miss it first time. 
You can catch it on the podcast. Missing out would be a crime. Super Talk 93.5 is always the place to be. Want to get the podcast version? Here, my friend, is the key. Super Talk by County.com. It's all there and it's all the rage. Spotify, Amazon, or Apple. right there on the page. North Pike football is back. It's another exciting season of North Pike Jaguar football on Super Talk Mississippi Pike County 93.5. Brought to you by Chick fil A, Toyota of Brickhaven, Ag Up, Exhaust Pro, Southwest Mississippi Regional Medical Center, Peterbilt of Macomb, and Lot Furniture. It's North Pike Jaguar football on the air at 93.5 FM. Available online at supertalkpikecounty.com and through your Alexa devices. for chipping in. Last night, we had a work session of the Macomb City Board of Mayor and Selectmen. The way the days fell, first and third Wednesday, uh, Tuesdays rather, are work sessions, and the first Tuesday fell on the first. So we got the month kicked off big time. That does mean, by the way, as you might suspect, at the end of the month, we will have a fifth Tuesday where nothing happens down on the 29th. No work session, no meeting, because work sessions on the first and third, meetings on the second and fourth Tuesday. If there's a fifth Tuesday, everyone goes for pizza. I don't know what they do, but I just really don't think this this crew is hanging out together for fun on the side. Uh, when they're done with their appointed duties. Okay, so last night, uh, in in the middle of the meeting, it it was, again, over an hour long, close to two hours long, uh, the work session, a lot of different topics came up, uh, including, by the way, the succession plan for the retiring fire chief, Gary McKenzie, and absolutely no one is happy about that. Chief, nobody smiled when they got this news. Nobody, well, except for him and his wife. They, they, they're tickled to death. Everybody else is like, no, you can't go. That was my reaction anyway. But they talked about that. We'll try to get into that later in the week. Uh, all sorts of things. But I wanted to pay special attention to... The section of the meeting where they discussed the audits. Now, as you recall, when this administration came in, they they were three, four years behind on audits because the previous administration didn't believe in stupid stuff like bookkeeping. They were not big on, you know, keeping track of your money. So... This administration came in the door and said, that's one of our priorities. We're going to catch up on the audits. That's going great, by the way. If you're supposed to do one audit a year and you spend three years catching up, doing a total of one audit a year, guess how much you've caught up? If you said not at all, congratulations. 
your math skills actually make you overqualified to work in city government in Macomb. That is the definition of zero progress. You've caught up nothing. And that's pretty close to the truth for Macomb City. So uh, the, the question was brought up and specifically asked in the format of, when are they coming to present the audit to us? When, when, when are we getting this thing? Let's listen in and see how things are going, shall we? Um, when are they coming to present the audit? Uh, talk to, actually, Dr. Cray was here on Friday. Uh, she requested more information uh, on behalf of the, um, the auditor. Uh, city clerk and I, we met with her, uh, passed information to her. I talked on the phone uh, about 30 minutes ago. Uh, they're still gathering information, putting it together, so there's no set time that he's giving us now when we're going to get the actual audit. <coughs> So the auditor is asking Dr. Dupre for some additional information. So either this is surprise information no one was aware of that uh, needs to be included in an audit that the auditor found and then had to come back and ask, or Dr. Dupre missed something. Which one is it? And how can it be this messed up? I mean, I, I just have the mental image in my mind that at the end of the last administration, they went in there to try to figure out what was going on with the books and with the audits and everything else. And they didn't have a ledger. They didn't have a spreadsheet. They had, they had an old cigar box full of crumpled receipts. That's the impression that it gives the continual, nonstop struggle to perform a basic governmental function for three years now. Going on three years. It's just astounding. So now here we are, October. Yesterday was the first, so the first day of October, the first day of the, the new fiscal year. And we, I don't believe, have had an audit this year presented. We've had a draft. That doesn't count. This new information being requested is on that draft. So after they made a draft of an audit, they said, up, oh, wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. We got to have some other stuff too. Go, go get this. At what point does this just become stalling? It's kind of what it feels like, right? Well, I was just asked when they were going to present it, and he said, well, they needed this extra information, so we don't really have a timeline. At least we're in comfortable territory. We've been desperately asking for a timeline on the financial situation in the city of Macomb and getting the book straight for over six years now. So at least we're used to that as an official stance. The final audit currently, yes, currently boy, the draft. Yes, the final thing. So, like... Assume positive intent. It's now October 1. We're now another year behind, right? So uh, are we going with the same company next round? And what do we need to do to get them to come present within a month? I don't, I don't know if you could hear it buried in the background noise there, but when Suleiman Cotting said, so it's October 1st, it's a new fiscal year, so now we're another year behind. Is that correct? And the city administrator, yes, sir. At best, if you give the most charitable take on this possible, at best, this administration has done its job. It's completed one audit a year. But when you're four audits behind, that ain't helping. And that's where we continue to find ourselves. I've talked to the audit that we have currently on on, uh, on contract. Uh, he is willing to do the next audit for us, but he said to me he wants to get this one out of the way before he can get the next audit. Well, yes, that's basic financial structure. You can't do this year's audit until you've got last year's. you got to have a starting point. you you got to be able to build and move forward from there. You, you can't, you can't right now 
balance your checkbook here in August if you don't know what checks have cleared, what has been paid, and what hasn't been paid since February. You got to do them in order. You, you got to take them one domino at a time until you catch up. It just, to me, it feels like the, the problem is pacing. We're just kind of seemingly lackadaisically skipping through the wildflowers out in the field, taking our dear sweet time and enjoying the view as we stroll towards a goal that really needs a dead run to accomplish. We're not catching up anything. Yeah, I think it'll be easier, obviously, in doing this one. Even and Dr. McCray working together, the numbers will be there. Uh, unfortunately, I think some artists have struggled with a lot of the information that, uh, that we had to get them with, with our information. So I think that they now have a better idea of what they're going to be needing from us going forward. So we can expect the audience, I, I, I'm, I'm taking the report in, in this, this year this year. We can expect the audit before the end of the year. Because the auditors were confused about what information they needed to conduct an audit for the city of Macomb. This is why Selectman Cotting said, are we going to use the same auditing firm again? If you're an auditing firm, which by that, that description means you conduct audits, and then you get in and you're surprised... You're caught off guard by what information you need from a, mun from a municipality to conduct and complete an audit. Either you are an awful auditing firm or you're dealing with a bunch of knuckleheads that don't have their stuff together. I'm going with the second one, personally. And I'm sorry, if you think this is a bad mischaracterization, I'll correct it in four years. Because that seems to be the way we do business in the city of Macomb. But end of the year, it's October already, end of the year, so sometime in the next few months, we'll maybe get another audit. Maybe, possibly. Right. End of this year? No, I mean, you know, it's already October. So. I mean, the next one or, or finishing this one? This one, finishing this one. I'm, I'm going to say uh, November. So is there something that we're not tracking to? Like, I know there's findings, but there's findings in the last one. Like, uh, well, we have a draft. It, and maybe it's more of a rough <laughs> draft than I'm thinking. Uh, for me, kind of the most important thing is not. Because we know what was wrong, right? We know what was wrong. So I just want to get them caught up. Like I, I want them popping out every three months, not not the time between the draft and a final possibly being three months. That's reasonable when you're trying to catch up four years of work on something that you do once a year normally when things are operating properly. You know, before the previous administration, when the previous administration took over. Uh, we were behind on zero audits. The audits were caught up. And then that crew came in and messed up the world. You heard Seligman Cotting and you heard no pushback, no disagreement. There are findings. What that means is there's stuff wrong. Findings are when they discover that something isn't as it should be. Something needs to be changed, whether it be in a process, whether it be in a total in an account, whether it be the way the accounts are being used, there are findings. He then went on to say, we, we, we know what's wrong. We know what, okay. This is pie in the sky wishing. I get that. I would love to hear a very clear, very concise explanation of what was done wrong by the last administration. Because sitting around that table, all six of the selectmen were not there. They were not on the board during the last administration. It doesn't fall on any of them at all. They had zero involvement. So what 
was done or not done during the last administration that led to this much problem getting the books straight? That's what I'd love to hear, and nobody at City Hall is going to do that. You know why? Apparently, they don't care what you think or how you feel. It's got nothing to do with their life. You you may be upset. You may be wondering what's going on. You may be wanting explanations about what's being done with your tax money. But we'll get to that later. We got to pick out the new car for the mayor. You can eat celery back anyway. Well, I'm sure they can call him, but again, he's waiting on you know a couple of things that uh, we have to get him. One being capital assets. You know, she's waiting to put that together. So uh, I'll talk to him tomorrow and see if he can you know, speed it up. Okay. Again. Uh, now, in this particular case, uh, you, you're an auditing firm. You get to the point to where you have completed a draft audit and you didn't think to ask about capital assets or there was a problem with the capital assets as they were originally presented that raised a red flag and they need some more information to figure out what's going on. Again, it's one or the other. Neither one is good. There, there are no good answers. There is no happy ending on this story. And the generic method of talking around the situation isn't helping anyone with anything. I uh, got to get a couple of things. I'm uh, going to do it in a few weeks. Uh, we got to, we got to, uh, we just got some things we got to take care of. And uh, when's it going to happen? Sometime in the next three months. Specifics. Be specific. If you talk like that to your third grade teacher, you're not going to get to go out at recess. So I don't know why anyone would accept it from an appointed official. It gets really old. It got old quite some time ago. It's just getting older now. Got a couple things. Oh, reading over his audit talks about the internal controls and it talks about the cash receipts at the police station. Do we accept, accept cash? No. It talks about, um, you know, creating better internal controls for cash receipts at the police station court services. Don't take cash. He doesn't know that. He might have something. I love the answer there because uh, Salima McKenzie is reading from the draft audit. And one of their findings, one of the things they pointed out is that they need better controls to account for and handle the cash coming in to pay fines at city court. And of course, we've you know, never had a problem with cash coming into city court to pay fines and then it vanishing. <laughs> So, you know, uh, how much has been paid back again? I had the number here recently. I'll have to go dig it up. Uh, it was almost a million dollars that vanished, apparently. Uh, so the city board cut off accepting cash payments. Check, money order, debit or credit card, fine, no cash. Did that quite some time ago. The fact that the auditor is stating in the findings that they need better controls on cash at the city court. Was there something turned into them showing some cash went through city court? Now, again, we're still behind. We're talking about during the previous administration. Um, if so, how much and where to go? This is not an out of bounds question considering our history. If not, we, we didn't tell them that, but you can tell by the way City Administrator Myers answered when Selectman McKenzie asked, uh, do we take cash? Just a second or two pause, and then City Administrator Myers says, 
No. They didn't read the draft audit. I'm, I'm not sure they read it front to back. I don't think they know what's in it. Which would, if true, immediately lead to the question, do they care? Because it sure doesn't feel like it. You better talk to me about because he's listed as an internal control finding. Um, I, that's, that's one thing. So, are you saying the audit, our audit for the city of Macomb was waiting for a consultant, Carolyn Dupree, to get more information to him? Now, they had some problems last night with the broadcast of the uh, work session. Nothing bad or nefarious or, or anything involved. Been in that room many, many times. The signal is not all you could ask for. Some days it's better than others. Never could figure out why. It just it, That's just the way it works. So... Yeah, it kept cutting in and out, but they'd start it right back up. Uh, and that's one of the places where it dropped out. But when we come back, we'll finish this out with the rest of the audio on that the subject. The boat that day, he left the shack. And... But that was all. It doesn't get better. I'm, I'm just going to spoil it for you right now. I, I would love to lead you along and fill you full of the warm, fuzzy happies. If you're waiting for the answers to surface like a beluga whale, um, you're going to be disappointed in the blowhole department. Okay, I should have thought that phrase through more before I opened my mouth because... As soon as I said it, there had to be a better way to put it up. Don't want to insult any blowholes. We continue on this Wednesday morning after this. This is Kristen with Selman's Jewelers. I'm excited to start a new trivia question of the week, so stay tuned for the answers. This week's question is going to be about the October birthstone opal. Opals are formed how many years ago? Opals form in several different colors. We'd love for you to stop by and see our collection today. Come by Selman's, your family-owned jewelry store since 1945. 1311 Delaware Avenue, Macomb. mornings at 6 after 9 on 93.5 FM or you can catch up anytime by going to supertalkpikecounty.com Dave in the morning at supertalkpikecounty.com Catch up and catch on. North Pike football is back. It's another exciting season of North Pike Jaguar football on Super Talk Mississippi Pike County 93.5. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A, Toyota of Brookhaven, Ag Up, Exhaust Pro, Southwest Mississippi Regional Medical Center, Peterbilt of Macomb, and Lot Furniture. It's North Pike Jaguar football on the air at 93.5 FM. Available online at supertalkpikecounty.com and through your Alexa devices.
come back. No Super Talk, to Mississippi, to Pike to County. Boy, I am just, I'm drowning in theme music for the uh, work sessions, aren't I? Um, all right, let's get right back to it because they did have that little break in the audio. Again, that's just the way it works inside City Hall in the meeting room. Sometimes the signal's great, sometimes it's not. You'll lose connection, have to reconnect, so forth, so on. Nothing unusual about that. That's just the way it works in that room for whatever reason. Uh but uh, Slima McKenzie, you, you heard him right at the end there, uh, asking questions and talking uh, about the audit and the fact that the auditor is waiting on information from an independent contractor, uh, Dr. Dupre, working for the city, uh, before they can continue their work. Uh, and it's, it's really an appropriate uh, Line of questioning, I think. Uh, what, what, what's the involvement in City Hall with these audits? If an independent auditing firm is waiting on an independent contractor to provide them more information to get it done, uh, okay. W what else is happening involving the city itself? It's a legitimate line of questioning. Uh, I had a little drop out for a, a few seconds, and then uh, everything picked right back up. There's M MDA. Some kind of MDA uh, agreement or something that uh, he needs her to do as well. She has to do that. So there's several items that, that he needs to get this, this audit finished and working to get that done. So that was just two examples. Okay. I, I would really like to get this in responsibility of city employees and not consultants and to get accounting done. So when can Mr. Dupree go away? I mean, it, it sounds like the clerk is, who's in charge of our finances has nothing to do with this. It sounds like it's waiting on a consultant of ours that we're paying by the hour. I think our clerk is working an entire different year. Right. So Dr. Dupree, you know, is working in that year. So I know that's in the third you know, going forward has uh, been working with the controller in a different year. So, uh, I mean, yeah, we're working ourselves you know, out of that contract with Dr. Pray. Uh, but as far as our financials, uh, I think the board can look at keeping her on our financials and not the okay. reservations. Yes, the financials are important. They're a big part of the audits. Uh, if we're doing great on financials, why can't we get the audits caught up? If we can't get the audits caught up, there's some hitch in the giddy up here somewhere. There's some problem. There's some chink in the armor that we're having to smooth out. And don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. I am not in any way saying that Dr. Dupre is doing a bad job or that she wasn't necessary. Because the previous administration, that four-year period, it has become increasingly obvious they made an inconceivably big mess out of things at City Hall. You, you can't spin it. You can try. That's what the, the, the Democratic Party does. Just got an email as we were coming back from break from the uh, Mississippi Democratic Party, the, the subject line of the email reads, Mississippi Democrats cheer Governor Tim Walz's decisive win on the deba debate stage. What debate were they watching? The bug-eyed bandit standing there uh, saying he's friends with school shooters and admitting he lied about being in Hong Kong during the Tiananmen Square massacre Got, scored a decisive win. So we, we see a tendency from the, uh, the Democratic Party and Democratic officials to um, f perform much like artificial intelligence. One of the big problems with artificial intelligence is you ask it a question and sometimes uh, what it tells you is not the truth, not the literal truth. Sometimes it's just wildly inaccurate. Sometimes you just make up being in Hong Kong when you weren't. 
Uh, there is a term for that with artificial intelligence. It's called hallucination. They, they literally say the artificial intelligence will hallucinate answers trying to, trying to answer a question you ask it. How much hallucination is going on with the whole financial thing? For, for four years there, the previous administration, the previous board, the one right before this one, it was all hallucination all the time. You do what you want, and then you squint and turn your head until the light's just right, so it looks like you're doing what you need to do. That seemed to be the modus operandi for the previous administration. And now the bill has come to you, as it always does. So I'm, I'm not saying that Dr. Dupre uh, was not needed, was not necessary to help try to catch some of this up. But I agree with Suleiman McKenzie We've been traipsing down this path for a while now. Years. At some point, we have to actually be caught up, don't we? At some point, I mean, if it takes four years to catch up the four years of mistakes and whatever was going on in the last administration, you don't, and that's when you brought somebody extra in to deal just with that. You don't exactly have the pedal to the metal on getting this done, do you? A little less hallucination, a little more dealing with facts. What are we doing? What are we doing with our time? And with City Hall staff and an outside accounting consultant and an auditing firm we're barely able to pull off one audit a year, which is standard and always has been in the history of the city. Um, you're, 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 not, uh, you're not putting any, any extra effort at all. It doesn't, not, not when you go by results, you certainly aren't. Well, you said we were going to have two audits this year, and now we're not getting this one done until the end of the year, and he had not started on the next one. So. Can you ask Mr. Booker Camp or whatever, is that his name? To send it in writing when he's going to be through with this one and when he's going to be through with the next one. A good idea, Booker Camper. I, you know, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but that's what you keep saying. And I keep bringing it up and it just, anyway, ask him, when's he going to be through? He's a, he's getting paid by the hour from the city of Macomb and Put it in writing say, I am waiting on this, 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 and this. And then we can get this, this, and this. If it's a consultant that's done it, let's pay Miss Dupree more money to get it done. Uh, let's pay somebody to help her. But, but the answer of two weeks, two weeks, two weeks a month is not a good answer in my opinion. Uh, let's pay somebody to get it done. You know, I, I took a, a brief look through the archives because I have all of the audio uh, stored in multiple places, both here and, and other buildings. Uh, and when I say, you know, all of the audio, I have an extensive audio archive of city board meetings. Uh, going back to, uh, let me see here. I'm, I'm just, I'm curious now. I got to go check this out and see how far back it goes. And the answer is, uh, the folder that I'm looking at 2018 it goes all the way back to 2018. I've got the audio. I just took a brief glance, a brief look to try to put together a, a montage of, the number of times we've been told just, just a couple of weeks. We got, we got two weeks. This is coming soon. Uh, we're about to get this done. This is about to happen. Uh, but I very quickly realized that would be impossible. I mean, I could do it. I just can't play it for you because the show's only an hour long. If you cry out for more, if you reach out for so like my McKenzie, as usual, has a point. And at this point, the one audit a year, that, that's the bare acceptable minimum. Um, 
this administration, this board so far, is failing miserably in its stated goal of catching up the audits. It's not happening. We're gaining no ground. And we need to figure out why. When your car suddenly starts losing the ability to accelerate and it'll only go 20 miles an hour as a top speed, you get it checked out, you figure out the problem, and you get it fixed. You don't decide, well, we're just going to drive mostly downhill now. It's bad plan. Bad plan. Final break. Close it down for a Wednesday right after this. This is Kristen with Selman's Jewelers. I'm excited to start a new trivia question of the week, so stay tuned for the answers. This week's question is going to be about the October birthstone opal. Opals are formed how many years ago? Opals form in several different colors. We'd love for you to stop by and see our collection today. Come by Selman's, your family-owned jewelry store since 1945. 1311 Delaware Avenue, Macomb. North Pike football is back. It's another exciting season of North Pike Jaguar football on Super Talk Mississippi Pike County 93.5. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A, Toyota of Brickhaven, Ag Up, Exhaust Pro, Southwest Mississippi Regional Medical Center, Peterbilt of Macomb, and Lot Furniture. It's North Pike Jaguar football on the air at 93.5 FM. Available online at supertalkpikecounty.com and through your Alexa devices. Once again, we are done. Closing Tomorrow, time. I cannot Turn believe it's Thursday already. Tomorrow, North Pike Thursday. Every boy and every girl. Talking about the goings on and the happenings Closing in time. Jaguar territory. One we do it every single week. So we're, we're shooting for a personal best so far this year of having North Pike Thursday on Thursday, two weeks in a row. <laughs> It's been a year already. Also, don't forget the Mississippi Democratic Party has congratulated Tim Walls on his decisive victory in the debate last night. I'm pretty sure they'll be sending out a notice later letting everyone know that up is down, red is blue, and cold is red hot. Have a wonderful Wednesday. We'll do this again tomorrow morning at 9.06, my friend. I'll see you then. A Super Talk Mississippi media production.